Welcome to this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kirsten, and I'll be your host for today's show. Today, we're going to be talking about embracing the modern governance paradigm. And joining me to talk about this topic is Lisa Edwards, board member with uh, Colgate Palmolive, and also is the chief operating officer with Diligent. Welcome, Lisa. Thanks, TK. Great to be here. So modern governance. So this is a sort of a a, a buzzword, a, a, a philosophy that uh, Diligent has sort of uh, certainly embraced and talks about all the time and um, has certainly helped make a, it, a common uh, sort of phrase in the boardroom. And it has now been used sort of as setting goals for boards on how they can ensure that um, they are up to speed with their processes uh, to stay ahead of the curve. So um, I thought it might make sense since you, since Diligent is, you know, such an advocate of this, that you might take time, you know, in the beginning here, just to educate our office, our, our audience on um, modern governance and why it's important for directors to sort of implement that philosophy in the boardroom. Sure, a great idea to start out with a little vocabulary uh, and grounding. You know, for, for us, I think modern governance is really this umbrella that encompasses how leading organizations approach risk, compliance, audit, security, ESG, um, and the overall governance of their company. It's the interconnectivity that kind of defines how um, companies lead with purpose. And we've heard a lot about companies of purpose, leading with purpose. It kind of started with some of the business roundtable, uh, you know, stuff five years ago, uh, and Larry Fink coming out with his annual letter around sort of focus on ESG issues. And I think the, the net of it is that the world is really evolving away from a, a solely uh, shareholder lens on the world and more on um, a more holistic um look at, at what is that organization's place in uh, its community, um, how does it treat its employees, how does it relate to its customer base, um, and uh, and that's sort of some of the, the purpose lens around it. So um, we, at, at Diligent, we try to provide board members and, and, and executives with the tools that they need to operate uh, with a conscious, with a lens towards some of these new and emerging issues. Um, you know, I can give you one example here. Um, we recently recognized uh, with Fortune magazine. So Fortune uh, and Alan Murray kind of uh, came and said, "Let's let's do this modern board 25 together." So we went to you know together looked at what is an example of a really good board that is moving toward modern governance. And um, the the boards that made this list, the boards that um, that made the modern board 25 with diligent had higher than average scores on things like director expertise and independence, on um, diversity on the board, and, and not just the diversity that we you know talk about um, uh, you know historically male female split type of thing. So gender was in there, but also age diversity, nationality diversity, that kind of thing. Um, there was percentage and tenure of independent directors directors and how forward leaning uh, the company has been uh, on ESG, things like, is there a net zero pledge? Are they filing some of the, uh, at this point, voluntary, soon to be potentially mandatory uh, uh, if, the, if the SEC rulings come through, um, things around ESG. So it's really a holistic view of, of how you um, how you tie a lot of these threads together, very much in, in, you know consistent with the ongoing, you know, 10 years ago, we would have been talking about corporate social responsibility. Um, now we're talking about ESG, but really I think there is a, a much broader um, groundswell movement. It's much more mainstream accepted now uh, and that companies need to um, understand their purpose and have that built into the way that they, they uh, kind of have a lens on the world. And that's what modern governance is. So um, when you do things like the top 25, some people say, you know, why do you do that? Well, the benefit of that is, and particularly when you outline the criteria, is every board around the country then goes and looks and says, where do we fall within, you know, those parameters and tries to improve 
So I, I have always thought that that's the real value of doing something like that, that you get a chance to do some self-evaluation. And, um, you know, it's, when I look at, the, when I look at modern governance, the thing that, that sort of comes, jumps out at me, and certainly since I've served on a board, which is more than 10 years ago, um, is speed, business information, and subsequently the need for boards and managements to keep pace with that speed. You know, when you look at the consumption of information and data to make decisions in what we'll call the virtual world that waits for no one, okay? Um, that to me is one of the most challenging and mandates that technology and processes, you know, help to make quick decisions. I mean, if, you're, if you go up on an airplane and come down in today's world, <laughs> All hell could, on an hour flight, all hell could break loose in that period of time, where in the old days, you had till the newspapers came out the next day to sort of get people together and do that. No more. So knowing all that, can you sort of give some examples where either technology or process has helped boards sort of keep pace with the speed of what's happening today? So, for example, if there is some sort of emergency vote on, uh, you know, on something, um, you know, that can be done uh, in a in a much more um, efficient and quick way than, uh, you know, FedExing, uh, you know, wet, you know, wet signature paper um, type of thing that, that that we used to do. So, I think in many ways the the digital movement, uh, and it's just very very few boards that are left that are still getting the, you know. 400 page binder of, of paper, uh, you know, and, and, uh, and a couple of trees worth um, of stuff into their, you know, it, it sent to their, sent to their house a, a week before. Um, so, and the, and the digital nature of boards also allows for more real-time stuff. So, if there is, you know, um, in the in the sort of old way, uh, paper based. If um, you know, if something changed in the two weeks out between, you know, printing those boards and collating them and sending them over, you know, um, uh, that you know they they couldn't really change it. Now it's sort of a, an update to the board, and probably all of us have lived through, um, you know, getting kind of some of those updates. You know, the day of the meeting, it's like here's some here's some updated information on this. So I do think there are some aspects like that. That. Um, there's also some 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 things that we can um, we can do. So, for example, um, we are working on some integration of just more real time reporting. And um, you know, obviously, it goes through the CEO, the corporate secretary, before it comes to the board. But what is the you know what is the connective tissue between some of the most common reporting needs? If they're you know if the board is meeting, why not get um, you know, the latest and greatest on all of the SOX findings or uh, incidents reports um, as of, you know, yesterday, as opposed to as of six weeks ago at the end of the quarter. So has anything changed between now and then? So there are, um, you know, I think there are lots of, of different ways that, you know, technology enabled boards can be more nimble, but there's also a lot more things for boards to keep their eye on, you know, everything from ESG to cyber risk to geopolitical risk and, you know, I think the pandemic actually pointed out many things that we potentially weren't looking at uh, as boards holistically that we do have to look at now. So, you know, start of the pandemic, um, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of really deep look by boards on on supply chain um, that probably most of us weren't doing on a regular basis in the boardroom. Um, then there was, um, you know, employee health and safety and. Of course, there's, you know, a lot of companies that look at employee health and safety, but not all of them. You know, I wouldn't have said it, a technology company uh, would be looking at, at that. But in fact, uh, many, many companies then did have to focus on that. And then it became, uh, you know, the great resignation. How do we think about as a company, our strategic, the strategic importance of recruiting and retention of employees? And then it became employee mental health. You know, how do we think about, um, you know, as a company, what are our obligations uh, to help support the mental health of our employees? Employees. And 
all of these things are pretty new. Um, and it's just sort of indicative of there's just lots of things flying at board members. So to the extent that uh, we can sort of enable and simplify some of it digitally with simple dashboards, um, with real-time information and, and all this kind of thing, I think it, it, it really helps um, directors get their arms around it because there is quite a bit to uh, to cover off on these days. Yeah, well, let me send up, send up one alert in this digital world that you know I have sort of echoed consistently on this show and I want people to be aware of, um, you know, the, the advent of, email and texts and whatever um, has certainly made it easy for boards to communicate with each other. But my message all the time is, listen, that is not the tool to be using to communicate with your fellow directors on sensitive board issues. Um, first of all, it's way, way too easily hacked. Okay. And if you're talking about mergers or sensitive topics, and all of a sudden that appears to go viral or because somebody's hacked your personal email, um, it's very important to make sure that you have a secure communication. Um, I, I know this is sensitive to diligence customers, but it should be sensitive to every single director on how they communicate about that. So just an alert in the digital world that everybody needs to be aware of as we're, as we're discussing the speed of business. Yeah, I think that's true. I think, um, you know, sometimes directors forget that that texts and WhatsApp and everything else is all discoverable. We have about two minutes left and I don't want to let you go. I want to tap that seasoned director in you a little bit um, and sort of ask you, so, you know, what in today's world, um, and it's been a long time since I've sat in, in, a, in the boardroom as a sitting board member, but what in today's world are some of the challenges that you find sort of in meeting your fiduciary duties as a corporate director? Well, I think I, I'll just expand a little bit on what I said before. You know, uh, earlier this year, the SEC put out uh, proposed rulings on climate um, with the SEC uh, in the U.S. This is um, looking at, you know, scope one, two, and in some cases, scope three emissions. Directors need to know what that means, um, and they, uh, you know, they're calling for reporting on this as soon as 2024, which means a look back to 2023 data, which means in six months, uh, all of us need to, um, you know, be uh, aware of this, be asking our companies, how are you managing this? How are you uh, baselining your climate? What are you thinking about uh, as it relates to these new rulings? Um, you know, similarly on cyber, um, some of the increased uh, focus around cyber with uh, the actions in Ukraine, um, you know, super, um, super top of mind. And these are not necessarily, these are somewhat technical topics uh, that, uh, that that board directors need to be aware of. You know, I'm personally taking a, a climate class that, that we spun up at Diligent for Directors because of this, because I, I, you know, I want to make sure that from a fluency perspective, from a familiarity with frameworks and that kind of thing, um, that I'm able to address these questions and ask how we are um, filtering these things into the strategic planning of the company. So it's, um, you know, it's it's something that all directors need to stay up to speed on. And um, I liken it in the same way, um, you know, many of us come to the boardroom with some sort of domain expertise from some place or another. It may not be in climate. It may not be in DEI and I. It may not be in cyber. But the onus is on all of us to become conversant enough in it to be able to ask the right questions, to be able to probe on management about what they're doing in these in these areas, and to make sure that um, it is it is in, intertwined into the strategy of the company. Well, uh, all very interesting and great advice from somebody that's um, certainly um, sitting in the boardroom these days. So, Lisa, I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us today, and and really appreciate it. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Great seeing you. And that will conclude this edition of Diligence Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical board topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. 